and it gives us something that we can latch on to uh, very easily to, 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 to help us in our growth in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Fellowship. Well, that's what we want to talk about this morning. And in the chapter that uh, Brother Brown read to us, the word fellowship appears four times. It appears four times. It appears twice in verse 3. It appears in verse 6. And it appears again in verse 7. Fellowship. I think with it appearing that many times in one short chapter, 10 verses, I think John has something pretty important that he's trying to say. Amen. Uh, now I'm not claiming that I interpret the Bible by counting the number of times a word appears, but uh, I think there's an emphasis that he wants us to see. Now, uh, we've talked about this chapter on a number of occasions recently, and we know that uh, this chapter, John is dealing with some, uh, some docetists and some Gnostics who are coming into the fellowship of the saints and who are creating a situation that is undermining the faith of the disciples of Jesus Christ. And, uh, uh, and while he applies these things to docetism and Gnosticism, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we, are, uh, we have to understand that these downfalls, these shortcomings, these, uh, uh, the, the, the poisoning of the faith, uh, in principle goes on even in our times today even though we don't use these terms to describe our worldliness. But John here is talking about fellowship. Now I was trying to write up here the word koinonia. It's K-O-I-N-O-N-I-A. I'm going to try it again. I'm not sure what's with this, this board or the, the markers or whatever. I must admit, when I go to the store and buy markers, I do purchase the cheapest ones. <laughs> that might change things a little bit, yeah. huh? K-O-I-N. K-O-I-N-O-N-I-A. Koinonia. Now, koinonia is, is a Greek word that means... Uh, that means joint sharing. Joint sharing. Now, sharing. Now, um, joint sharing. Uh, this is something that is in every society, and uh, I just want us to sort of get the picture now. The only way that I can really help you get the picture is to do something that you've probably heard me do before on a number of occasions, and that is use an example of fellowship. And uh, probably one of the best examples of fellowship that I can see in our society is, uh, uh, is, is, is an, exa an example of team sports. All right? Uh, koinonia is team sports. <clears throat> team sports. All right. So when we talk about koinonia, there's several things. There's several things that are of absolute importance uh, when it comes to us understanding koinonia. Now, um, the ecclesia of Jesus Christ is a koinonia. It's a fellowship. Amen. It's a communion. Amen. 
it's a it's a it's a it's a team sport. All right. Now, several things have to happen in a team sport. Number one is uh, there has to be a common purpose. First of all, team sport is not something that people just sort of come into. Oh, I think I I think I'll go do this today. I think I'll go play with the Eagles today. Oh, no, no, no. I don't like green. So I think I'll go play with the, get on the field and play with the Phillies today. Corner chosen people. Amen? Selected people. Anybody who won't, don't come down to the stadium on game day and play with the team. It's already chosen who's playing, <coughs> come on now, Amen. with the team. All right? So, it, but they have a common purpose. Now, uh, the, 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 the team sports is always looking for victory, are we not? Amen. Amen. We're looking for victory. We're not, we're not just out there, you know, having a nice time. We're not just out there fiddling and faddling. You know, we're looking for victory. Everybody on the team, <coughs> from the coach to the water boy, yes, are functioning to bring about victory. That's right. Isn't that right? Amen. Yeah, that's right. You know, uh, uh, okay. Now, the second thing that is, that is uh, needed to have uh, a, a team sport or, or a koinonia is commitment. The person on the team cannot just show up when they feel like it. The person on the team cannot just show up when ain't nothing else happening. You know, I'll come if don't nothing happen. The person on the team understands that when there's a time, when it comes time to function, something has already happened. Amen? Amen. And other things must be pushed aside. <clears throat> the person on the team doesn't show up when they feel like it. Well, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm a little tired today. <laughs> uh, amen. amen. So I think I'll just, you know, oh, I worked last night. I think I'll just lay in this morning. <laughs> Am I getting there? Amen. Amen. Commitment. And that commitment is first priority. Priority is something we don't much understand no more. We don't understand some things take priority over others. We just sort of we just sort of run the way we feel like it. Okay? First priority, and another word for it is faithfulness. Mm -hmm. When you're on a team, you are expected to be faithful. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 By the other team members. Mm -hmm. Huh? Amen. That's right. And when you're not faithful, you you get out there and you're supposed to be you supposed to be playing third base. And we get ready to play play and you and we ain't got no third baseman. Huh? Faithfulness. It's not just something, you know, if you ain't doing nothing else, I'm gonna show up and go play third base. No, uh -huh. this is a team. That's right. Huh? That's right. That's right. Uh, Koinonia is team sports. We rely on each other. Amen. And when you don't show up, you are disappointment to each other. Amen. 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 Or when you fiddle around and act like what you're doing ain't important because I don't feel like doing I don't feel like the other. You know, when you baptized for remission of sins, if you understood what you were doing, you gave your feel like up. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Uh, amen. Amen. 
First priority. What, what priority? First. first. Now you know what first is, don't you? Mm -hmm. Huh? First. All right? Yes, sir. Now, uh, thirdly, in a, in, in a koinonia, in a fellowship that John's talking about, everybody plays their what? Part. Part. Right. Plays their part. Everybody plays their part. Everybody plays their part. Okay? We rely on you to play your part. Amen? Amen. The fourth thing is necessary for a, for a, for a koinonia is sacrifice. Sacrifice. Amen? Amen. Amen. Everybody in the cornea sacrifices. No fans in this game. We all players. We all participants. Disciples of Jesus are not fans. We are participants. Uh, amen. amen. No fans in the corner neither. Yeah. Amen. amen. So everyone makes a sacrifice. So if we're going to, John used this word four times. We need to understand what, what's involved in it. First of all, there's a common purpose. It's a team sport. Ecclesia is a team sport. We are a team. And we are out to, to gain what? Victory. Victory. Amen. <laughs> Anybody on a team that is not out to gain victory mm -hmm. don't need to be on the team. Amen. 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 You know, you know, you know, you know, you know you get somebody on a team that don't want to win. <laughs> huh? Come on now, y'all been around the block once or twice. Some of y'all have been playing all kinds of sports. You know what happens when you get somebody on a team that don't want to win. Huh? You know, like going to war and you get somebody, you know, he don't care what side he's on, he just shoot. He might shoot forward, he might shoot back. He might shoot sideways, he just shoot. He's sacrificing. He's sabotaging. We're out for the victory. Commitment. We have to have commitment if we're going to function on a corner near. Now you know, it's, you know that's that's one of the reasons why I, I keep saying this thing about church because church don't require this. Ch church is somewhere you just show up and sit in the pew and get a little something to hold you over till next Sunday. Uh, if you're going to come that time, it might be hold you over till the next first Sunday of the month, mm -hmm. huh? Mm -hmm. But koinonia, what John is talking about, requires uh, commitment. It requires purpose. It requires that uh, we give it first priority. And, uh, and it requires that we be faithful. And it requires that we play our part all the time. All right? It might be the coach. might be the water boy. might be the, might be the first baseman, third baseman. We just expect you to do a good job and playing your part. And we expect you to be consistent and and regular and faithful in your part in in in, in the team. Amen? Amen? And we expect a sacrifice. What happens if you got a team and nobody on or you nobody on and wants to sacrifice? Where's the team going? Huh? And in, in your favorite TV show come on, on Wednesday night at 7 30. <laughs> I thought I'd get a little closer to you. Huh? And and and, and the team is prepared and, and, and uh, yeah, amen. Come on now. I got you. No sacrifice. You know, if you're not willing to sacrifice, you can't be in the corner of the air. If you're not sacrificing, you might be sitting in here, you might be sitting in the dugout, but you are not a part of the corner of the air. You're not in fellowship with us. 
you know, I, I, I think I've, I've used the illustration some time ago about uh, uh, when I was in campus ministry, I had, uh, I had a bunch of guys, and some of them were on the basketball team down at Morgan State. And they'd be playing basketball and whatnot, and some of them, sometimes they would bring some of the other members of the team to the Bible studies. And there was one fella in particular and, uh, uh, that I remember, and uh, he was on the basketball team. He was a guard or whatever. And uh, what happened was one night, you know, you in college, people come from all over the place. He came from Timbuktu somewhere. But one night, his mother and his girlfriend were in the stands. <laughs> and Avery just kept on gunning the ball because he's trying to impress his mother and his girlfriend. Avery was missing shots all over the place and losing the ball to the other team. Huh? Now Avery was on the team. Avery was playing. But Avery wasn't in fellowship. Because Avery's purpose wasn't victory for the team. Avery's purpose was to show off for himself. So that night, Avery was not in fellowship with the team. You know, when you get a team together, you, you open up all kinds of possibilities for, for, for improper motives. Because anytime you get a group together, group behavior changes. People act different in a group than they do, amen, when they're by themselves. When they're in a group, they get a chance to show off. When they're in a group, they got a chance to get attention to themselves. Mm -hmm. When you're in a group, you know, you, 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 you know, you got all these questions. What's my place in this group? Am I important around here? Mm -hmm. You know, do these people like me? Mm -hmm. Come on now, don't look at me like you. <laughs> when you get a group, you have group dynamics. All kinds of things happen in a group. But now just because you're in a group doesn't mean that you're in fellowship. Amen. 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 Okay. So common purpose, commitment, play your part and make the sacrifice that is necessary. Amen. 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 Now, that's the word koinonia. And let's, let's follow John to this chapter and see what happens. Uh, John says in verse 3, That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you. And he's talking about the message of Jesus. Mm -hmm. That you also may have fellowship with us. Mm -hmm. Also. All right? Now he's saying, John is saying, we got fellowship. Mm -hmm. But we want to bring you in too. All right? That we also may have, you may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. That you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Same word, koinonia. Mm -hmm. And he's saying that he, the, uh, the apostles, have koinonia with God and with Christ. So there you are, the apostles, God, and Christ. And he is inviting <coughs> you to come into fellowship with God and with Christ and with the apostles. All right. You have never received such a marvelous invitation Amen. in your eternal life. <clears throat> in your eternal life, in your entire life, that you to get an invitation to the White House doesn't compare to this. Amen. All right. 
to get an invitation to go to North Korea, North or South Korea and, 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 and sit down with the with, with little rocket man. <laughs> Doesn't compare to this. You are invited to be in fellowship. And look what he's inviting you to. He's not inviting you to just come and be a part of some party and sit in the back of some, sitting in the back of some big banquet somewhere at some table nobody even needs, sees or knows. Look, he invites you. He said that you also may be in fellowship with us, the apostles of Jesus Christ. There was a rich young, rich ruler one day, well, ruler, who wanted to be in that company. Yes. And there was a cost. Yes. Yes, sir. Come on now. Right, for being in that company. Amen. Jesus told that man, go and sell what? All, All, your All you have. And come and follow me. And he said, I'm going to give you treasure Amen. in heaven. I want you to understand, you cannot lose in this fellowship. Amen. 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 That's all right. You can keep all your stuff for your earthly stuff you want. But, when, but see, this fellowship is going to be victorious. Amen. Amen. And when we do the victory, where we going with our victory, your stuff can't come. Amen. Amen. Come on now. Amen. <laughs> your stuff can't come. Your house can't come. Your furniture can't come. Your car can't come. Your fancy suits can't come. You know where we're going and what we're doing. Your stuff can't come. Amen. And the Lord is inviting us. The apostles inviting us. He's saying now we are offering you the fellowship. <laughs> Not with the congressman. Not with the senator. Not with the secretary of state. He's offering you the koinonia with God Amen. and with Christ Amen. and with the apostles, the most marvelous group that has ever walked the face of this earth as human beings. Amen. Fellowship. That's what this is all about. You know, sometimes we just want stuff. It, it is, it's a shame. We just want stuff. That's right. The, 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 the prodigal son, he just wanted stuff. He didn't want that old man telling him what to do. He didn't want to be under that father. He wanted just to take the money and go, you know, it's too many prodigals. You know, we think of prodigal people as run off. Look. A whole lot of prodigals around mm -hmm. who just want the blessings. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I just want the bless. I just want God to bless me. <laughs> That's worldliness. John gets into that in the next chapter, yep. in verse uh, in, in verse sixteen, mm -hmm. when he talks about all is in the world, mm -hmm. yes. huh? You know, and, and see, we just want stuff. We just want God to bless us. You know, that, you 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 see why I keep I keep, I, I, and I don't I don't mean to be unkind. I mean to be warning you Amen. that church Amen. is no more than a decoy to keep you from seeing God. Amen. You go there, and everything's about you. Lord, I need a new car. Lord, my bills are with you. Lord, I got this bill to pay. Lord, I got this. Lord, I... it's just a decoy to keep you from seeing God. Yes. God invites us. John invites us into this fellowship, and God just wants to bring the whole world under His under the order of His universe. God has an order. Amen. God doesn't do things haphazardly. Amen. He don't just throw things out there and and and, and you you know how y'all used to do down. I hope I just used to do down on the corner. You know, mama needed a new pair of shoes and God come on, y'all like you don't know what I'm talking about. Don't sit there act dumb on me. I know where you've been. <laughs> huh? God don't do things like that. God has an order. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. that's right. And God's word and God's teachings are for the purpose of bringing us into His order. Yes, sir. 
on his universe. His earth. This thing ain't yours. You didn't buy it. You didn't create it. You didn't That's make right. it. You don't even know how it works. That's right. That's right. He just put you here. But he also didn't put you here empty handed. He gave he's given you an order to follow for you to be in according to his will. Amen. For you to be victorious. And so when it comes into us being in fellowship with God and with Christ, we need to understand God's purpose. God's purpose is to bring you into the order of his universe. God is committed to you. You don't ever have to worry about God not being there. Amen. 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 We strike up on Sunday morning. I got to worry about whether you're going to be here. Amen. Something might happen. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'll tell you right there. Something always happens. Oh, I don't know about you. All, something always happens to me. <laughs> Not unless you live some, <laughs> somewhere different from where I live. Something always happening to me. Uh, amen. Come on now. And I'm going to tell you what. You all don't expect me to not show up when something happens. Why we got this double standard? That's right. Ain't no clergy led classes in, in the ecclesia. That's right. Amen. The word of God is to everybody equally. Amen. Amen. If you expect me to be here, I need to expect you to be here. Amen. Amen. All right, please. Amen. 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 All that clergy lady stuff, that, that that's man made stuff. That God didn't put that in God didn't put that nowhere in his ecclesia. He said if you want to be great over here, you just do more work than anybody else. He that's greatest among you. <laughs> Shall be your servant. That's right. That's right. You don't have no titles and robes and stuff. Sometimes I look at all that stuff and them, them costumes and stuff and I'd be thinking about Halloween. <laughs> huh? I met a funeral yesterday. Here they come parading in collars and robes and, and all of that stuff. God didn't put that in his act. There ain't nobody up there and the rest of the folk down here. Amen. The goal of it all. And if we're going to be victorious, we need to keep our eye on the goal. We need to play our part. And our part our part is simply submission to the Lordship of Jesus. And I keep Amen. saying it over and over again. You know, one day, that's one expression that does not sink in for some reason or another. I, I, I'm going to get my discipleship group in the morning to give me some notes and things so we can develop a lesson on understanding what Lordship of Jesus is. Uh, amen. 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 Lordship. Lordship. That means what he says, you, you committed yourself to do. Huh? Amen. Luke 6, 46, why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Lordship. That's our part in this thing. And then, uh, uh, and then, of course, sacrifice. He invites us into the fellowship. And, and sacrifice. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's sacrifice from the top to bottom of this fellowship. Amen. Amen? Amen. God starts Amen. off with it. God gave. Amen? Amen. <laughs> what did God give me? Everything you had? That's right. Amen. Huh? What did you make? Mm. Huh? <clears throat> everything you have, everything you breathe, everything you eat, everything you, everything you, every capability you have of doing, God gave it to you. Amen. He's a giver. And then for you to turn around and not want to give back. And you want to just, huh? 
What did God give you? Everything you have. That's right. That's right. Everything. And then on top of that, he turned around and gave his only, come on now, what am I getting ready to say? His only begotten son. And you sitting on a few nickels can't give. God gave it to you. He didn't ask you to pay it back. He just wants you to recognize him and respect him. Amen. Amen. You know, I, 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 I've gone a long while without preaching much on money, but I've seen that maybe I should have. You see this up here? We need to keep that average up. Amen. Now, we, we hit it first Sunday in July. Now, we're going to have an average after the day. And we need to keep that average above this because that's what it takes us to operate and to spread this word down state and on and on and on. Amen. 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 Sacrifice. God gave. And I'm going to tell you something. If you're unwilling to sacrifice. Now, once you understand something, because a lot of times the reason why our money is so funny is because we don't give. Amen. God promised if you recognize him, he's going to take care of you. Amen. Read the Old Testament. Huh? He said your crops failed, and what little bit you brought home, I blew on it. And a little bit of money you made, I made it like you was carrying it out a pocket full of holes. The reason why you ain't got nothing, can't stand on your own two feet, most of the time because you can't give. You know, I listen to things, and this is not just inside the ecclesia. This is a life principle. Amen. I listen to covetous people sometimes, and they're always talking about somebody who gives a lot. Did you ever notice that? How crazy they are because they just give that money away. Huh? You know, I was listening to brother not long ago and he was talking about a man he worked for a Jewish man and the Jewish man was given to the synagogue $700 a week and he talking about the man that you know that ought to be my money <laughs> that man got better sense than give you that money what you gonna do with it you be right down the street buying cigarettes and crack and everything up liquor but I want you to understand, the man who gave the money was the employer. He owned the business. See, God, when you understand these kinds of things, you know, when, when you, can, you begin to see God, how he works. The man who gave the $700 a week owned the business. That he worked for, that the one who's saying you ought not give it work for. Huh? You know, go find some people who have given and see how they live it. Find some, even if they gave it to something that didn't, even if they gave it, it's, it's just a life principle that when you give, you have. And when you don't give, you have nothing. Huh? Those, so those, so gave a whole building. This, they gave this, they gave that, they gave the other, and they got a plenty. Giving don't drive you broke. Giving strengthens you. Amen. You know, and for me to stand in front of a bunch of New Testament Christians trying to get you up to, up to a tithe. I ain't even going to finish that sentence. I'll let you finish it. God gave. You see what God gave? God just gives and gives and gives. How are you going to be God-like? And you won't give. You're scared to get... You, you scared... 
You were scared to give as a possum is of an axe handle. <laughs> Terrified <laughs> that you might honor the God who takes care of you 24-7. Oh, brother of mine is on Facebook. Good preacher. Wanted somebody to send him some scriptures for New Testament giving. I, I ain't send him nothing. I, he, it was like Friday. He needed them for Sunday. I ain't have time enough to list them all. You want some New Testament giving? You know them. You just won't believe them. The poor widow. Huh? She gave all her living. Huh? Rich young ruler. He flunked the giving test. <laughs> yes, he did. The Lord told him to go and sell all you have and give it. 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. Paul talks about how we ought to how we ought to reap and sow, and that we reap according to what we sow. Amen. And the sowing was giving money to the poor saints in Jerusalem. It wasn't invested in property so you can make more money. It was, huh? The rich farmer. God blessed him. And if you have anything, it's because God gave it to you. Amen. And you're going to turn in the face of the same God and say, I can't honor you with it. Amen. No wonder the wages of sin is death. Amen. So the goal of it all, that's verse 3. <laughs> verse 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not truth. Mm -hmm. Verse 6 is to avoid the pretense of fellowship. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be on the team, you've got to do more than strut around and grin in folks' face. Mm -hmm. okay. Amen. Uh, amen. 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 Talk when talk does not match our walk. Mm -hmm. And I know we just on chapter one, but if you drop over to chapter two just a little bit, John deals with this. It's worldliness, and you know what? I, I think we might just spend some time on worldliness. But worldliness is why we don't get nowhere. Amen. Mm -hmm. Worldliness is why we don't grow. Worldliness is why we don't prosper right. financially, mentally, emotionally. We, we just don't prosper. Yes, sir. Because we're full of worldliness. Yes, sir. Worldliness, worldliness is you want everything your own way. And when something not your way, you think you can fuss some with somebody, and because you win the fuss that you 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 won, you haven't won. Amen. You haven't won until you consider others better than yourself. Amen. And we can listen to others. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. It's worldliness is when, and that's the lust of the flesh. Worldliness is when you want everything for yourself. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. The world just, now don't look. We have to resist what the world is trying to teach us. The world, the world has to promote worldliness because they want your money. Mm -hmm. They want all the money you have mm -hmm. and then they want you to go get some credit cards mm -hmm. so they can get the money you haven't made yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh? 
That's what the world wants. And it, and, 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 and it's less than I. It's, it's just, I want everything for myself. I want this. I want that. I want the other. I want me some. I want me some this. And <coughs> and when they get you, you decked out all over the place. You fancy this. <coughs> you try to impress people with the other. And your pockets is slick as a rat hole. Yes, sir. And you are not, and you are not capable of being in koinonia with anybody for anything. Amen. All right. And then wanting to appear important. <coughs> You know the pretense of it. When you pretending to be in fellowship. You just pretending. <coughs> I go to Ecclesia Delaware. Well, you need to understand. Do you belong to Ecclesia Delaware? Or do you think Ecclesia Delaware belongs to you? <coughs> you know we strut around. We want everything our own way. This don't belong to you. Amen. And you don't have no say so. Mm. And you have no rights. Amen. The minute you went under the lordship of Jesus, you gave up all your rights. Amen. This don't belong to you. Wow. You need you strut around here trying to have your own way fussing because somebody didn't do what you think they ought to have done. John said, and I, I'm going to read the message Bible, don't love the world's ways. Mm. Yeah. Don't love the world's goods. Man, we just all tied up. Yeah. When the world is doing something, the world say dance, we dance. When the world say drink, we drink. When the world say gamble, we gamble. When the Lord's, when the world say, you know, <clears throat> don't love the world's ways. Right. Amen. Amen. You know, I used to have that, that banquet center, and I I, I remember, you know, somebody saying, well, we don't drink, but what we we, don't, we we need to get some, we need to get some look like liquor. <laughs> so technically, the non-alcoholic, uh -huh. so technically we won't be, look, let me tell you something. If you don't believe in drinking, you don't, don't, we don't, don't want to be looking like drinking. Like That's right. Amen. 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 All right. You know, man, just, just stand for who you're supposed to be. Right. Amen. 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 Or don't go there. That's right. That's right. Don't love the world's ways. Don't love the world's goods. Love the world squeezes out. Love of the Father. See, God is love. We are made in the image of God. So we are going to be a people of love. Our only choice is what we love. You will love something. <laughs> you will love something. Uh, chocolate, cigarettes, car. You will love something. Amen. 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 Don't love the world's ways. Don't love the world's goods. Love of the world squeezes out love for the Father. You can't love the world and God too. Amen. Practically everything that goes on in the world, wanting your own way, wanting everything for yourself, wanting to appear important has nothing to do with the Father. It just isolates you from Him. Verse 17, the world and all is wanting, wanting, wanting is on the way out. You just, you, you're not going to have no victory, love in the world. It's on its way out. Jesus already told you, to, don't, don't put stuff where, where moth and rust corrupt. 
thieves break thieves through and steal. Yep. You know, you fool around and get all your stuff and, and moths get in it. And what the moths don't get, the rust takes over. And what the rust don't get, the thieves steal it. And then what happens is when you manage to get some of it past the moths, the rust, and the thieves, you die and leave it. And I don't have to, I don't have to, look, it's obvious, just open your eyes. Every time you go to a funeral, somebody else died and left, and guess what they left? Everything. Yeah, that's right. Ain't got no more say so over nothing. So why should you just spend all your life putting together, getting ready for something that's go, that ain't, yeah. Okay. First John 1 7. But if you walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses all sins. The condition we meet is to walk in the light. Amen. Amen. We don't have to create fellowship. We don't have to fix or 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 or, or we don't have to uh, <clears throat> design fellowship. In fact, we can't even if we want to. That's right. Because fellowship is not a command; it's a promise. Mm -hmm. Fellowship comes by serendipity. We walk in the light. And I want you to understand too something. You know, a lot of times this stuff is hard to swallow in the devil. The devil ain't the devil because he's stupid. Mm -hmm. The devil always thinks you can't do what's going to bring you the blessings that God wants to give you. John said, we write this thing that your joy may be full. You don't, you don't have no full joy fooling with material possessions. They make you make you happy when you first get them, but by the time you get to the third monthly payment, you're halfway sick of that thing. <laughs> and then you keep buying something and getting something else, getting something else, because you think it's going to make you happy, and you get something else, because you think something else, because you think it's going to make you happy. And it never makes you, it makes you happy the day you got it, and then after a while when the thing broke down and you got to service it, and the wind blowing and blow it all over, you, you know, after a while you just get sick of it. Walk in the light. And then, of course, he gives us the example. As he is in the light. That's Jesus. Don't try to create fellowship, substitute. We're going to have a big dinner. We have dinner. We need to have dinners, you know. Bible said, you know, break bread together. Amen? Amen. But the dinner ain't the fellowship. The dinner is just one little thing we do because we in fellowship. Amen. That's cooking cool chicken, so we can have fellowship. If you ain't, if you already got, ain't already got fellowship, cooking chicken not gonna put you in the fellowship. Yeah, cooking right. chicken won't put you in this. That's right. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. You know, <laughs> and don't stop cooking chicken either, y'all. <laughs> you know, don't make out like this preacher don't like fried chicken. <laughs> Now look, I just don't want you to substitute cooking dinner for fellowship. Because what God is calling us to, I'm mean, telling you, is you can't have a greater invitation than this one right here. And you might be scared, but you got to go through it. You know what? Uh, Listen to some of those professional athletes sometime when they interview some of those pitchers and whatnot. 
Don't you know they're standing on that mound and the whole crowd is, is tensed up, waiting to see what that next pitch is going to be like? Huh? And the whole team is on the field. They don't know what's going to and, and the batter's at bat, and that pitcher is standing there. I don't know what kind of mental stamina it takes to be a major league pitcher. But don't think that now, now he wants the victory. Don't think he's not going to pitch because he's scared. <coughs> huh? You have to learn how to pitch while you scared. Amen. Amen. Huh? Now I know, you know, I'm gonna tell you, I, I know for a fact that when I when I get these kind of lessons, somebody gonna get offended. <laughs> And I, you know, when I start talking about giving, there's always a couple of people to disappear, don't come back. <laughs> you understand know what I'm saying? So I don't do this trivially. I don't just do it because I know, I know there's always going to be a couple of people that won't come back no more or will get mad with me. Just not between you and me. That's right. Just between you and God. That's right. I, I, I don't I don't come in here with lessons that 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 came from me mm -hmm. <laughs> huh? and you don't have to take my word for it I don't like people to take my word when I told you ecclesia I don't want you to take my word for it I want you to go look it up and see it for yourself <laughs> yes I'm supposed to encourage you and help you along the way but you're supposed to believe the word of the living God. Amen. I'm not the ultimate soul. You know what Reverend said. No. <laughs> uh -uh. I ain't no Reverend. That's all right. All I'm doing is a man. What did the man say? In the song. I'm a nobody. I'm going to tell everybody about somebody <laughs> who will save anybody. <laughs> That's right. And what you need to do is go look it up for yourself. Don't tell me. It's not, the source is not me. you just being deceitful and lying. You can go out there. I don't got to go, but Brother Gwen said. That's right. Yeah, Brother Gwen said. Brother Gwen, if Lord willing, he'll say anything he read in this book that you need to hear. Amen. 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 That's the book. See, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship. Yes, sir. Ain't that a nice statement? Yes, it is. You don't have to fix fellowship. You know, make fellowship. All you have to do is walk in the light. That's right. Now, when you won't walk in the light, you want a fake fellowship. You will have all kinds of problems. Because you're faking something that you ain't. Amen? Amen. You're strutting around looking like this, that, and the other. Amen. Amen. When you ain't playing no ball. Mm -hmm. You just standing on the field. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something else too. We don't plan to create fellowship. God gives it to us when we meet the conditions. So our focus is to stay on walking in the light. Our job is to keep focused on living under the Lordship of Jesus. Don't be looking at other people. Other people just like you got stuff wrong with them. Yes. Amen. 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 Don't be watching other people. Don't be making the. You need to stay focused on obeying the teachings of Jesus Christ. And then he said, when you do that, you'll have fellowship. And I want you to understand that fellowship suits uh, supersedes all personal differences. Amen. Amen. Huh? Don't you know if the third baseman said something ugly about the first baseman, the next, the next game goes on. 
right. You understand what I'm saying? Why? Because they're focused on the victory. Amen. They're focused on the victory. And I hope you don't think that about 20 or 30 high energy, uh, halfway undisciplined men are going to work together without any differences. That's right. Amen. 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 Don't think any group of people is going to work together without anybody getting upset with somebody. Amen. It's not based on whether or not you like everybody. Amen. It's not based on whether or not everybody does what you what what you want them to do. It's Amen. not based on that. It's based on we are keeping our eyes on the Lord and the purpose for which we are called and we're in fellowship one with another and we're going to do all of our, all of us going to do our part to achieve the victory in Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Somebody say something funny about you and you quit. Then you're not in fellowship. Amen. See, fellowship supersedes all personal differences. A person might not be the same color as you, might not smell like you, might not use deodorant you like. Fellowship supersedes all personal differences. And I'm going to tell you something else. Personal differences don't have to be resolved for us to have fellowship. Amen. Amen. I ain't come back till so and so do so. <laughs> yeah, well, your mind's on the wrong point. Amen. You're not focused on the right thing. Amen. Amen. My mentor told me a dog running after a train will run right past a car. Amen. The dog run right past the train, run right past the car. When you understand that we're here because of Koinonia, then them other little things not going to stop you. You'll run right past them. You're focused on making disciples for the Lord. You're focused on being pleasing to God. You're focused on being in fellowship with God, having a having a having the pot or clay relationship that God is working with you. When your focus is on that, what other what's wrong with other people? Not going to keep tripping you up. All right. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Amen. Fellowship. God made it. Did he not? Yes, sir. Christ brought it down, paid for it. The apostles spread it around and gave it to us and delegated to us the continuance of his spread. And we are to continue to spread it and give it to us. Is that all right? Fellowship. Koinonia. That's what it's all about. And 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 Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Is that all right? Somebody said, Well, how do you enter this fellowship? Well, you enter this fellowship the same way they enter the fellowship. Amen. They, they, they listen and learn about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. They, and once they did that, then they were challenged to uh, make Jesus their Lord. Lord. That's what, that's what makes this thing run. That we all have the same Lord. That we're not carried away by the things of the world. We all have the same Lord. We make Jesus the Lord. And then once we do that... We, 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 we consummate that uh, decision and with a commitment in baptism into Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins. See, when you get into Christ, that means you're under his lordship. Amen. Amen. And then we walk in the light as he is in the light. And you 
you know what he gives us. Fellowship one with another. When you start making this fellowship dependent upon you, you're going to mess up. <laughs> Amen? You need the fellowship that he gives you. Amen. Not a fellowship you create yourself. Amen. 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 Walk in the light as he is in the light. We are fellowship one with another. And then he said, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. sin. Is that what you need? That's what I need. Amen. I need some cleansing. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, well, can you think you can go a whole day without sin? I wouldn't try it. Mm -hmm. I need some cleansing. Amen. I need cleansing in the morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Cleansing yes. at the yes. noon time. Yes, sir. And cleansing when the sun goes down. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. The victory. Yes. Yes. And live yes. eternally with him all the days yes. of our lives. Yes. Now, I know this might have been a tough sermon for you, but if you can take it, It'll bring you life. Amen. It'll bring you Amen. joy. Amen. He said, we, he, uh, John said, I write this that your joy might be full. And nothing on earth can give you the joy that a victorious fellowship can. Do you see the eagles? When they had a victorious fellowship? Huh? They had so much joy that it brought the whole city out. You, you understand what I'm saying? That's joy through fellowship. Imagine what God will do with us if we just simply walk in the light. And it don't take a whole lot of people. I ain't trying to have. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't looking at. I ain't looking at. Uh, 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 huh? I ain't looking for thousands of people. I'm not looking to, at, uh, what, what's my man down in Texas got the big mega church and all that kind of stuff. I'm not looking for, huh? Jake, TV Jakes. I, I ain't looking to TG Jakes. I'm looking to Jesus. Amen. Jake's got thousands. Yes. Jesus had 12. Amen. <laughs> And when he did have thousands, they came and went like streetcars. Mm -hmm. Ubers. Huh? <laughs> he, didn't keep, he didn't keep no thousands of people around. That wasn't what the Lord did. No. The Lord made a few disciples. And then the, the long range of faith. When he died, the whole number was about 120. Mm -hmm. Amen. In his lifetime. But after he died, the disciples yes, spread the message Amen. in the world. Amen. 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 Shall we stand? Wait a minute. Wait a minute.